Chechenko returns for Mosby South. Electoral Commissioner decries petitions and counting interference. And Warwagira Festival kicks off amidst election fever. This is National MTV News with Mary Batolo. A very good evening. Thank you for joining us for Wednesday's news. People's National Congress Party candidate Justin Chechenko has retained his seat for a second term. Chechenko won the seat for the Mosby South Open electorate on the first preference count, passing the absolute majority of 18,734. He polled 19,226 votes to defeat rival Samson Kirillio, 5,735, and Anaskate, 4,444. He was declared winner this afternoon by the returning officer, Michael Are. The PNC-led party has now returned two MPs in this election. The other is Taripori MP-elect James Marape. Chechenko was accompanied by PNC leader Peter O'Neill and leading candidate in the race for NCD Regional, Paul Spakop, to his declaration. Scenes of jubilation outside the Killer Killer Secondary School this afternoon. Justin Chechenko has been declared member for Mosby South for another five years. He was accompanied by Prime Minister Peter O'Neill and NC Governor Paul Spakop. Justin Chichenko becomes the second People's National Congress Party member to be declared after an absolute majority. Mr. Chichenko, in his speech, emotionally thanked his family and supporters for another term as leader of Mosby South. Electoral Commission, all the uh, presiding officers, all the scrutineers, the security, the police, all my coordinators, all my friends, all my family. And, um, and I beg, excuse me, as uh, some of the children, at the end of the day, you are all my family too. That's the key. On behalf of the party, we congratulate him. And I know that uh, many other members of parliament, whether they're in government or in opposition, who have worked as hard as Justin Pichenko, will continue to be elected by their people right to our country. Right to our country. And we are here ready to continue. And the minister is never ready. And I want to thank all the people of Mosby South for you know, believing in. I now declare Mr. Justin Chechenko as member elect for Mosby South. Thank you. The Mosby South MP was declared by the returning officer Michael Are in the presence of Prime Minister Peter O'Neill and the NCD Governor Paul Spakop. Outside the Kilakula Secondary School, his supporters in the thousands waited for the motorcade which took them through to Calgary settlement, Badili through to Koki and then all the way to Konadobu Field where thousands gathered to celebrate a victory. Tomorrow morning the returning officer Michael Arya will return the writs back to the electoral commissioner Patiles Gemato in the presence of declared Mosby South MP Justin Chechenko. Bethany Harriman, National MTV News. Electoral Commissioner Patilius Gamato is urging supporters and candidates not to interfere with the counting process. He said the Electoral Commission is receiving petitions all around the country and he has condemned these actions by candidates and their supporters. Gamato hopes counting will finish on, in time for the return of writs on July the 24th. In his media brief today at the Electoral Commission headquarters, Commissioner Gamato spoke of the high number of petitions presented all around the country to stop counting. He says this will have serious impact on the counting process. There will be petitions and disruptions by candidates and scrutinists. They are in, in, they are in fact uh, of, they are fact, they are fact of life. But election managers must handle these actions with the legal officers provided to them to keep the election process moving. I've issued this warning to or instructions to all election managers and assistant election managers today. They must hasten counting while staying in the legal framework. Provinces which have petitioned against the progress of counting include New Ireland, 
West New Britain, Southern Highlands, Hela and NCD among others. Mr. Gamata hopes to see all counting around the country and as scheduled before declarations and the return of writs. We are at the crucial stage of the election cycle. Everyone needs to take their role seriously and refrain from activities and behaviors that slow down the counting process. The Electoral Commissioner also highlighted that polling in some parts of the country has been extended due to delays. Kikore, in some, Kikore is polling in some uh, remote areas. I've, I've uh, they requested for extension and I've given them extension. Mr. Gamato is confident counting around the country will end on time. Jack Lopave, Jr. National MTV News. Electoral Commissioner Patilis Gamato says he is yet to receive formal letters of resignation of the two members of the Electoral Advisory Committee. The two members, Richard Kassman from Transparency International and Ombudsman Richard Pagan, said there was a lack of communication between them and the Electoral Commission. Gamato said he has not received any formal letter and described their resignation as immature. I welcome those new comments that they had no, had no serious disagreement with the Commission or with me. I had no quarrel with them. As I said, perhaps the role was not totally understood by all, con all parties concerned. I would like to point out that I have not received any written resignation from the two members who had a press conference on the other day. Some candidates from the Anglim Southwagi electorate in Jiwaka province have questioned the Electoral Commission appointment of the returning officer and his assistant. The Jiwaka Provincial Election Steering Committee has denied recommending the EC, the names of the returning officer and assistant returning officer. The candidates petitioned the Electoral Commission to revoke the decision before counting for Jiwaka begins. The Anglim South Wagi candidates say they need an immediate change to the appointment of the returning officer, William Roper, and his assistant, Samuel Kewa. They petitioned the Jiwaka Provincial Election Steering Committee last week to recommend to the Electoral Commission their query. The committee has informed the Electoral Commissioner to revoke the appointment because the, this, this, these, two, these two persons have not submitted their applications and they've never been shortlisted. And uh, that's why they should not be appointed. And the electoral commissioner is turning a blind eye on this thing. When petitioning the steering committee, Chairman Michael Wandel confirmed the committee had never received any application or recommendation from the PNGEC for the returning officer and his assistant. That's why we written a petition last week yes. to election um, committee, I mean steering committee chairperson, and that's the response he gave. He, he said, I'm aware of this problem. And I already told advice and Electoral Commission that this appointment is not proper. You should revoke. And uh, Their concern is for the Electoral Commission to revoke the decision and appoint other offices before Jiwaka goes into counting. Counting for Jiwaka is set to start today. And to actually see this happen is to have these two individuals replaced. Uh, we don't care who is being replaced with. Uh, because it is the prerogative of the uh, Electoral Commission under the election laws to make that appointment. These candidates say they only came to know about this issue after the polling. They said if it was known before, they would have asked for the revocation of the appointment before the polling. Vasinata Yama, National MTV News, Mount Hagen. Counting for Western Highlands Province has been deferred to tomorrow morning due to non-payment of presiding officer allowances. This has affected the returning of ballot boxes for some electorates. Tambul Nabilia electorate have all the returns and are set to start at 8 a.m. tomorrow. Day electorate returned 75% of their ballot boxes. Hagen Open has returned most of the boxes, but a few are still with some presiding officers. For Mul Baya Lumusa, Mul Council has returned at least 95% of its boxes. Lumusa returned all the boxes, while for Baya River, they are yet to be returned. The Provincial Election Steering Committee are urging supporters of candidates to respect the electoral process during the counting. This counting uh, needs to be properly attended to by the Electoral Commission. Uh, we have been advised um, in a series of meetings with the Electoral Commissioner and the election officials that um, all the accounts are to be provided so that there wouldn't be any inconvenience caused in the process of um, getting the allowance paid, but um, up until now we have seen that um, 
their payments have been uh, delayed for quite some, especially the polling officials. And uh, into counting too, we would like to appeal to the Electoral Commission to have this uh, uh, money paid into their account so that um, we, everyone is satisfied with the outcome of the results as well as... Counting in both East and West Sipik is now underway. In East Sipik, the Yanguru South Sea Open started its counting this afternoon, while in West Sipik, Nuku Open ended its eighth count at 6 p.m. Counting for the East Sipik Provincial Seat started this afternoon, and West Sipik will start this Friday. You can keep up to date with the latest on the Your Vote 2017 Facebook page. In East Sipik Province, Maprik and Angoram counting started yesterday. Uh, we were Kwasaragawi, Yanguru Sausia, and the provincial seat started today. One more green electorate counting started uh, as of, uh, will start as of 3 p.m. this afternoon. Uh, Nuku open electorate uh, counting started yesterday. In Telefomin electorate, all boxes are now in Telefomin district. Counting will start tomorrow. In Aitapelumi uh, electorate, counting will start uh, tomorrow. Uh, in West Sipik provincial seat, uh, by tomorrow, all boxes will be flown into the headquarters and counting for the provincial seat will start on Friday. You're with National MTV News. After these messages, progressive results from around the country. Stay tuned. Welcome back to National MTV News. Time now to take a look at the progressive results that we have on hand. We begin in the National Capital District and for the NCD regional seat, the progressive results after count 111 as of 3.40 p.m. this afternoon has Poe Spakop still in the lead, 12,578 votes, followed by independent candidate Andy Bauer, 5,244 votes, and Michael Kandiu running third, 4,900 votes. In fourth position is Myri Homosi, 2,323 votes. Babani Maraga rounding up the top five, 2,096 votes. To counting for Mosby Northwest, the progressive results after count 57, Lohia Samuel is in the lead, 4,604 votes. Semekere Morata, the former MP for Mosby Northwest, is in second position, 4,516 votes. Joseph Tonde is running third, 2,356 votes. Miria Ikupu is in fourth position, 1,887 votes. Russell Wavik running fifth, 1,571 votes. That is for Mosby Northwest after count 57. To Mosby Northeast after count 12, as of 7.40 a.m. this morning, Sape Molomi is in the lead, 810 votes, followed by Andrew Mold, 496 votes. Carl Ogok, 428 votes. John Kaupa, 298 votes. And sitting MP, Labi Amayu, currently in fifth position with 289 votes. That is for Mosby Northeast, the progressive results as of count 12. Two progressive results in Central Province and for the Abao Open electorate after count 10. Sitting MP Se Pukatemo is in the lead, 3,212 votes, followed by Eric Omoru, 935 votes, and Kelly One, 934 votes in third position. Se Tipo Vuata is currently in fourth place, 679 votes, and former Abao MP Kilroy Genia is running fifth, 606 votes. To counting for Rigo Open and the progressive results after count five, sitting MP Anopala is in the lead, 1,330 votes, followed by Rendell Rimua, 1,087 votes. Tura Elemi is running third, 942 votes. Lekwagura is in fourth position, 585 votes. Varigini Badira, Badira running fifth, 438 votes. The Makam Open has ended counting for the primary votes with the returning officer expected to make a declaration by Sunday. Willie Pillai Law said none of the candidates got an absolute majority and they'll be depending on the secondary votes for a declaration. After the counting, the 20th and final box, Pangu Party's Connie Iguan 
was in the lead, 7,205 votes, followed by former MP Andrew Bang, 4,284 votes, and sitting MP Paul Isikiel, 3,724 votes. Okay. Okay. After, after today, now let me play finish in primary counts by By tomorrow, I'm me play the lusum the quality check. So when by all officials quality check him can all box walk him quality check all that make sure him all that numbers all confirm all all your right all is straight all that by Thursday now by Friday by plan on Saturday elimination. And let's take a look at the counting results from Morobe Province, and we begin with the Morobe Regional Seat. The progressive results after count 25 sees former Morobe Governor Luther Wenge in the lead, 3,420 votes followed by Kemas Tomala, 2,486 votes. Ginson Saono is running third, 2,205 votes. Sitting Governor Kelinaru is in fourth position, 1,936 votes. Judas Nalau running fifth, 812 votes. To counting for lay open and the progressive results after count 11, Sir Nagara Bogan is in the lead, 699 votes, followed by John Rosso, 539 votes. Pastor Fabian Peter is running third, 429 votes. Matthew Minape is in fourth position, 427 votes. Ballantyne Buri rounding up the top five, 413 votes. To counting for Now I Open after count 24, Kennedy Wenge is in the lead, 3,314 votes. Masam Som is running second, 2,132 votes. Mission Gware is running third, 1,908 votes. Michael Gotoha running fourth, 1,495 votes. And Timothy Bonga of the National Alliance Party in fifth position, 1,112 votes. And to counting for Kabum Open after count 14, the progressive results have Patrick Bassa in the lead, 4,680 votes. Former judge Don Sawong is in second position, 3,231 votes. Haring Koreka is running third, 2,844 votes. Mainue Fanamu is running fourth, 2,655 votes. And Gomu Mupe rounding up the top five for Kabum Open, 2,032 votes. That is the progressive results after count 14. To Manus Province and the progressive results there for the Manus Regional Seat after count 12. Charlie Benjamin, the PNC candidate, is still in the lead, 2,392 votes. Leslie Roy is running second, 1,822 votes. George Sikin is currently third, 1,733 votes. Michael Sapa running fourth, 1,382 votes. And businessman Sam Tassion rounding up the top five, 1,025 votes. To counting for Manus Open and the progressive results after count 12, Job Pomat, a PNC candidate, is in the lead, 2,539 votes. Former Provincial Administrator Web Kanawi is running second, 1,455 votes. Rodney Pokapin is running third, 1,178 votes. Jacob Jumagot is running fourth, 1,096 votes. And sitting MP Ronnie Knight, currently in fifth position, 877 votes. To Wesipik and Nuku districts started counting yesterday of other districts in the province. The progressive results after count seven C sitting member Joseph Sungi in the lead, 7,847 votes, ahead of former MP Andrew Kumbakor of the PNC party with 1,968 votes, Emmanuel Nassam in third position, 908 votes, and Adam Wangu rounding up the top four, 638 votes. To Isipik Province and the progressive results for counting in the Yanguru Sausia Open electorate. After count one, sitting MP Richard Maru is in the lead, 1,255 votes, followed by former Yanguru Sausia MP Peter Wararu, 457 votes, and Isaiah Sanduma rounding up the top three, 204 votes. To counting in Namatanai in New Island Province, after count 18, the progressive results have Walter Schnobelt in the lead, 14,449 votes, 
ahead of sitting MP Byron Chan, 8,958 votes, and Albert Tuan running third, 236 votes. To counting for KVNG Open and the progressive results after count seven, Ian Ling Staki is in the lead, 2,315 votes, ahead of sitting MP Ben Micah, 1,705 votes. PNC candidate Martin Aini is running third, 1,028 votes. Ruby Kerpa is running fourth, 513 votes. Lucy Siki rounding up the top five, 248 votes. That is for KVNG Open, the progressive results after count seven. To East New Britain province and the progressive count for East New Britain regional seat after count 23, Nakikus Konga is still in the lead, 4,662 votes, ahead of Sinai Brown, 3,673 votes. Sir Leo Dion, the sitting governor, is in third position, 2,309 votes. Geshon Passingan running fourth, 1,887 votes. And John Sambi rounding up the top five, 1,440 votes. That is the progressive result for East New Britain Regional after count 23. To Pomio Open and the progressive results after count 17, sitting MP Elias Kapavore is in the lead, 1,973 votes. Benedict Tati is running second, 1,492 votes. Alois Gongi is running third, 1,457 votes. Patrick Kaupun is running fourth, 1,343 votes and Robert Lutulele rounding up the top five, 1,260 votes. To counting for Rabaul Open and the progressive results after count eight, the sitting member, Dr. Alan Mart, is in the lead, 3,986 votes. Raymond Polius running second, 2,531 votes. Stephen Rufflin running third, 359 votes. Komit Kunai running fourth, 219 votes. Levi Poipoi running 5th, 194 votes. To counting for Gazelle Open after count 18, the progressive results have Jelta Wong in the lead, 2,739 votes, ahead of sitting MP Malakai Tabar, 2,666 votes, Henry Urai running 3rd, 2,203 votes, Bernard Lukara currently in 4th position, 1,575 votes, Nobet Kubak running 5th, 1,041 votes. To counting for Kokopo Open and the results after count 8, the progressive results have Komet Malari in the lead, 2,439 votes, ahead of sitting MP Eraman Tobining Jr., 1,751 votes, and Emil Tamor running 3rd, 1,287 votes. To West New Britain and the counting there, the progressive results for West New Britain Regional have sitting Governor Sassindran Mutuvel in the lead, 11,813 votes, followed by Chris Lagisa, 6,765 votes, and Tony Puana in third position, 2,975 votes. Counting for Kendrian Gloucester electorate after count nine, the progressive results have sitting MP Joseph Lelang still in the lead, 7,659 votes, ahead of Peter Arul, 2,252 votes, and David Sui running third, 1,489 votes. To counting for Talasia Open after count 10, the progressive results have Francis Manake still in the lead, 3,103 votes. Blaise Dow is running second, 2,349 votes. John Taka is running third, 1,633 votes. And sitting MP Francis Maros has moved up to fourth position, 1,389 votes. To Southern Highlands Province and the progressive results there for Southern Highlands Regional, Joe Cobol is in the lead, 2,384 votes, followed by sitting MP William Powie, 1,276 votes, Jerry Kiwai running third, 772 votes. For Imbongo Open, after count six, Pila Niningi is in the lead, 3,404 votes, sitting MP Francis Awesa has 732 votes, Joe Alopea has 20 votes. 
for Kagua Erave Open after count two. Topa Mata is in the lead, 563 votes. Maris Wapa is running second, 527 votes. Joel Raitano is running third, 23 votes. Sitting MP James Laguerre is just outside the top five at the moment. To Mendy Open after count five, Rafael Tonpi is in the lead, 1,541. DK Wano, the sitting MP, is running in second position, 1,234 votes, ahead of Alvin Hook, 930 votes. To Nipa Kutubu Open, the progressive results after count one, Luke Akop is in the lead, 2,526 votes, ahead of sitting MP Jeffrey Komal on 88 votes, and David Kelly running up the top three, 58 votes. And Yalibu Pangia, the counting there after count 50, the progressive results have Prime Minister Peter O'Neill having a comfortable lead, 23,240 votes ahead of Stanley Liria, an independent candidate, 5,883 votes. And now we'll look at the finance news. The Kina closed unchanged at 0.3145 US dollars in the interbank market. At Bank South Pacific, your Kina was buying 0.307 US dollars, 0.3988 Australian dollars, 0.2646 Euro, and 34.63 Japanese yen. Looking at commodity prices at New York close, gold closed higher, coffee and cocoa closed lower, while copper closed the day unchanged. Crude oil and copper closed higher, while palm oil closed the day lower. And on the stock markets, the Dow Jones closed 0.5 points higher, the ASX closed 55 points lower, and the All Ordinaries closed 51 points lower. You're with National MTV News after the break, the start of the Warwagira Festival. Stay tuned. Welcome back to National MTV News. The 2017 National Mask and Warwagira Festival began today in Kokopo. The popular Kinavai dance was performed at the Kokopo beachfront early this morning to mark the start of the four-day festival. The festival is an annual event hosted every July in East New Britain province that aims at showcasing various art, culture and dances of Papua New Guinea. Edwin Fidelis reports. The National Mask and Warwagira Festival began today with a colorful display of the traditional Kinavai dance early this morning. The Four Days Festival is one of the biggest events in the East New Britain tourism calendar that happens on July every year and it attracts tourists from all over the world. The Four Days of Festivity seeks to showcase and preserve unique Papua New Guinea heritage that comes in the form of masks and traditional attires and songs and dances from all over the country, some of which are the oldest but are still in existence. East New Britain is not only a province owned by the Tolai people, but it is a province that is home to a multitude of people from all over Papua New Guinea. New developments are happening in the country at an unprecedented rate, and the people are becoming ignorant and largely complacent of their cultures. The festival is a positive one that also seeks to challenge these negative perceptions about the new way of life. And most importantly, the organizers of the event want to make sure that while these changes happen, the people must remain true to their cultures and identity as Papua New Guineans with roots. Edwin Fidelis, National MTV News, Kokopo. Fuel and energy supplier Puma Energy is happy to be assisting Bukblong Pikinini fueling futures for PNG. Puma's general manager Jim Collins said there is no better future to look at than the children of the country and guiding them in their education. Bukblong Pikinini executive officer Henry Ume said through the partnership with Puma, the NGO is able to distribute over 500,000 books, not just for NCD, but throughout the country as well. The partnership between Puma Energy and Book Belong Pikinini dates back to 2014. 
The support of fuel products is a sponsorship worth over 100,000 kina to date. You know, in PNG, um, early childhood um, education has been a real challenge for various reasons. And BBP uh, plays a significant role in making sure that we give opportunity to um, children of young age, ages. Mr. Collins said Pumar Energy is committed to its corporate social responsibilities. It also fits very clearly with our focus on and, and our corporate social responsibility area around um, the development of programs for health, education, women and children. Yeah. And we're very, very committed to those and Bukblong Pekinini is an absolutely wonderful um, opportunity for us to contribute and be part of. Mr. Ume said looking ahead, Book Belong Pikinini will work with Puma Energy in its footprint areas in Roku and Koderika to establish proper facilitated libraries and train and provide resources for the teachers. Deli Waigeno, National MTV News. And we now join MTV reporter Tekla Gunga, who is at the Sejongai Stadium, the venue for counting for Mosby North East electorate. Tekla, a very good evening to you. We believe counting has resumed at, where, at the venue where you are. Can you tell us uh, what count they are up to now? Yes, yes, Meriba. Um, counting for the Mosby Northeast seat resumed at 10 a.m. today. Um, they're in to count 18 now. What's happening right now is they're putting up the votes that were collected against the candidate's name. So um, according to the tally sheet, um, Sape Molumi is still uh, leading the race on over 700 votes. Um, second in line is Carl Okuk on over 500 votes and in third place is um, John Cowper. Now will they be counting all throughout this evening? That's right, Meriba. Um, this is the day shift. After counting two more boxes, they will um, suspend counting for about an hour. And then those pol uh, counting officials that are working during the night, they'll be called in, including the scrutineers, and they'll commence counting for the night shift. Um, they're aiming to complete the counting by Saturday this week. And um, every night they're counting about six to seven boxes. All right, thank you, Tekla. That was Tekla Gunga coming to us from the Sejongai Stadium. You're with National MTV News. After the break, some sporting updates in Trukai Sports. Trukai Sports. Welcome to Trukai Sports. We begin with Rugby League and Intercity Cup matches played in Mendi, Southern Highlands Province, have been stopped by the PNG National Rugby League for the rest of the season. During last weekend's match between Hella Wigman and Mendi Morks, the referee called off time on two occasions to remove spectators who stood near the sideline, impeding the touch judges' movements. PNG NRLC manager Stanley Hondina said the match review committee made this ruling with all remaining home games for the Murks will be relocated to other venues. To basketball and the national train-on squad for both the men and women's basketball teams have been announced straight after the national championships. Speaking to MTV Sports, head coach and basketball PNG CEO Joel Kalu said he's happy with the selections. Godwin Eki reports. Recently announcing the national train-on squad for both the men's and women's teams for this year's Melanesian Cup title, basketball PNG CEO Joel Kalu says he is pleased with the selection. Kalu said the basketball PNG has put the best players together and it will be difficult to separate the players. However, he says at the end of the day, it's about putting together the best players to represent the country. We wanted to give as many players the opportunity that we thought were deserving. Um, you know, so what happens now is those players based in Port Moresby will commence training next week, um, you know, doing both strength and conditioning, high performance training and on-court sessions. We will have... Um, 
selection camps in about five weeks' time, uh, where all those selected players from throughout the country and Australia will come to Port, Mo Port Moresby. He said with only 10 weeks to get the players ready, overseas-based players will be asked to join the squad in PNG before the final team is announced. He said preparations for getting the players ready are underway, as well as organising the event schedule with Fiji, Solomon Island and New Caledonia. We've had a couple of communications just with the countries about sorting out some uh, details for them about you know accommodation and places to stay and logistics. Um, so it's exciting. It's you know we're we're starting to to grow the interest. Um, you know we've got now 10 weeks to the championships are on. Uh, so in terms of not only getting our teams prepared, uh, getting the tournament prepared. So lots of work from the federation as a host. Carlos said, despite the final selection in the next few weeks, the federation is aiming to put together a gold medal team. The Melanesian Championships will take place from the 27th to the 30th of September. The next possible event Basketball PNG could be preparing for is the Mini Pacific Games in Vanuatu, but the Federation is still waiting for confirmation from the PNG Olympics Committee before a team is put together. Godwin Eki, National MTV Sports. The Port Mosby Records Club will be hosting the Squash and Tennis Open Tournament from the 28th to the 30th of this month. Having officially launched the competition last week, registration is now open until next Monday, the 17th. This year's two-day tournament is expected to see over 130 participants as per the initial show of interest coming from Kokopo, Lay and Australia. The selections for major events including the Commonwealth Games will be done during the tournament for both tennis and squash. We are a bit later than last year. Last year we had a very nice successful event in, in the beginning of June. This time, due to several reasons, we postponed that to the end of July. The reason is uh, that we had to find a few players who are abroad and uh, we could have to, had to contact them, especially in squash, because this year the Open is the selection for the PNG squash team for the uh, mini games uh, in Tahiti, I think. Oceanian Championship. So all the ranked players of Papua New Guinea will be here in the end of uh, July and they will compete for their seat uh, in this uh, team 2017. And in a show of good faith, the number of sponsors have reached 15 this year. Thankful for the support, Palm Records Club President Tim Kribish said this will also go towards the improvement of club facilities and junior development. The juniors. We have an upcoming squash junior which have already represented us as a club in a junior tournament in Keynes. So this one will bring her a bit further and uh, we hope that she will follow uh, Lynette Vey, which is our PNG superstar. She is the number one in Australia in the moment with the, with, the, with the juniors. And we hope that our junior will come as well. So your funds is not only helping this tournament, we as a club invest this money carefully and thoroughly also in the development of our young players. The Palm Rockets Club says all interested participants are to hand deliver the registration forms to the club or have them emailed to palmrecordsclub at gmail.com. Dean Rose Rico, National MTV Sports. Trukai Sports continues after these messages. Stay tuned. Trukai Sports. Welcome back to Trukai Sports. To football and New Zealand went on a scoring spree as they downed FIFA Under-20 Women's World Cup 2016 hosts, Papua New Guinea, 12-0 in the day's opener. A well-drilled Fiji side then secured a 4-0 win over Tonga before a tightly fought contest between New Caledonia and Samoa resulted in a 1-0 win for the New Caledonians. Despite taking on the might of tournament favourites and defending champions New Zealand first up, Papua New Guinea started well, keeping an experienced New Zealand squad at bay for the first 15 minutes. Between the post for Papua New Guinea was Faith Kassire, who did well to keep a flurry of shots from New Zealand, but couldn't last for long. Ramona Padio, a senior international for Papua New Guinea, was a crucial member of the squad, controlling from the centre especially when in possession. 
However, she struggled to connect with her teammates, and at the final whistle, PNG succumbed to a 12 0 loss. In the other matches, Fiji proved more organized with a dominating performance against Tonga with the 4 0 trashing, while New Caledonia made an impressive start to their campaign. As the side saw off Samoa 1 0 in a heated exchange in Newer Reserved in Auckland. The OFC Under-19 Women's Championship will pick up again on Friday, 14th July, with another three and thissing encounters scheduled in Auckland. Shane Saroya, National MTV Sports. And then Chukai Sports up next. Your weather report for the next 24 hours. Chukai Sports. Chukai Sports. The weather details are proudly brought to you by Dulux Weather Shield. Worth doing with Dulux. Here is your weather for the next 24 hours in the southern region, mostly fine in Daru. Cloudy with some showers expected in Port Mosby, Kerma and Popandeta. Cloudy and windy weather in Alatau, the top of 30 degrees. To the Momasa region, some showers expected in Leh and Wa with a top of 30. A top of 31 for Madang with cloudy weather and some showers. And cloudy weather and some showers expected as well for Wiwak and Vanimo. 30 degrees, the top temperature. To the New Guinea Islands region, thundery showers expected in Loringau and Buka. Cloudy with some rain for Kokopo, Rabaul and Kimbe. And cloudy weather with some showers for Kavian. And in the Highlands region, Mount Hagen, Goroka, Kundiawa, Mendi and Wabeg, all these major centres can expect cloudy weather over the next 24 hours. The weather details are proudly brought to you by Dulux Weather Shield. Worth doing with Dulux. And that's the way it is today, Wednesday the 12th of July 2017. Coming up next, your vote 2017 with Neville Choi and Titi Gabi. But for now, on behalf of the news team, pleasant viewing, good night.